let me introduce you to Lionel, who's going to um, tell us more about uh, the Koala framework. Thank you. So, hello everyone. My name is Lionel. I work as a DevOps engineer at eVoyager SNCF. eVoyager SNCF is a digital factory which addresses uh, the SNCF group digital challenges. We are almost um, 1,500 of employees working in three sites, Lille, Nantes, and Lille. I work in Lille. We address two main uh, challenges, distri digital distribution through uh, we SNCF and Rail Europe internationally, and travel information via the mobile app, l'assistant SNCF. We are delivering to them IT services. Today, we are going to talk about static code analysis. We will start first by make a, uh, do some overview, a quick definition of static code analysis. So we will, foc we will follow up with uh, the Koala framework and Koala beers, how it is used to do static code analysis in Python. And we will see uh, what are coming next into the, fr into the framework to ease the use of Python to do static code analysis. And we will finish with the Q&A, if you have questions, of course. Static code analysis. We can define it as a method to extract facts, detect and also fix defects in source code without executing it. They are mainly used to do code quality, code reviews, also compliance, when you have to do compliance tests to in, for security, or you all just want to ensure that your code style into the team are well respected. And, of course, to detect flaws and try to fix them before going to, before running it. The Koala framework. We have a lot of tools today to do static code analysis. As you see, there is a bunch of tools. And the, the, the more you have tools, the more you have a way to configure those tools. And it's pretty hard. So let's categorize uh, those tools into analyzers, as you, so, as you see up there, and you have also uh, the way we use those tools via editors, tools and services, and also the way we consume the result produced by those tools, like exporting your result into JSON or an HTML report. As you see, it's pretty complicated to deal with all of those tools and the way we use them. So. How can we know? What if we can have one only tools to manage all this mess? That's why Koala has been built. Koala is not pretty much, uh, it's just um, an API which is language agnostic. That means you can, you use Koala in Python, but you can analyze code from any languages. The support, it supports more than 60 languages for now, programming languages. Let's have a closer look. That's the typical um, constitution of a static analysis tool. We, command, we, we start by using the code as data, and you have some model extraction to just get data from the code. 
you can you then produce an intermediate representation. We could be we can be um, you have AST. You also uh, get uh, data structures. You could also have call graphs and also control flow graphs. If we zoom out into the main goal of Koala, as I, so, as I said, you have data structures. For analysis, we have rules that also call routines. In Koala, they call it bears. Is the way you implement your algorithm to do static code analysis. And after that, the produced result, we could be in two forms, outputs and actions. Output is like detecting the, the way you detect flows and, and errors. You could have also as an output the, um, a fixed recommendation, the, how we can fix our code. And you, have, you can you get, as a result, also compliance reports for flows and code styles, as I said before. You also have actions. There is a lot of actions there. Action could be um, apply a patch or actually fixing the, the flaws or the defects. Let's see how to pick setup. You could use pip to install Koala beers, which install everything you need to start working with Koala. Or you could also use Docker, which I think is the recommended way because you have, it doesn't have to deal with pip uh, packages. You just use the container which, which is packaged up with all the things you need. You have a tr another way, which is online. You have a beta uh, beta web page online where you can just uh, put the, the repository of your code and start uh, working on it. <coughs> Let's see um, how to use Koala. Let's see some code. First, you clone the project and as you see, you have a beers directory and the src directory. In this project, is mainly we have many two languages. We have C and Python. And the way you, you approach the, 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 the use of Koala is by saying, OK, I have a project with two languages. Let's list the uh, available bills, the available rules that I could use to analyze my code. So you run this. And you see a bunch of uh, beers available. For the next, for the next slides, I will just aliases Koala to make the, the, the slide more short. So you just run Koala, and it means run, running Koala behind Docker. So I want to analyze my code written in Python. I will list the beers available for Python. Yeah, I choose the Pepe beer, for example. I don't know much about it, so I get some documentation how to use it. And I see also we have optional settings, how to set the, the configuration for the beers, and what the beers can do. The beers can detect formatting and can fix formatting. So you run your, your, your beers, you run Koala, and uh, specifying the beers, PEP8, on your Python files. First, you will get a GIF output. It, say, it says how your code is not compliant to the PEP8 uh, rows. And after that, you have action, as I said before. You can uh, either do nothing or open the files, apply the patch, which means make the code compliant, 
and also ignore the command. And you have, uh, you can also pass apply patches and the, uh, at the command line to do the, the apply patch action directly. You also have another option to specify which action you need to, to do. As you have noticed, you also, uh, the tools recommended you or suggest you to use dash dash save to save your configuration. That's mainly um, brought us to, to the configuration file. As I said, you have a lot of tools and you have a lot of configuration files to, to tell which, how the tools should analyze your code. In Koala, you also have one file to deal with all uh, bills. When you run with dash dash save, it produces a file called a core file. It looks like this. You have sections, it's an init file. You have sections and you have uh, two, at least two mandatory uh, uh, settings, which is specifying the bills, the rules you need to apply on the code, and the file you need to be applying on. You can also uh, enter your settings in the, at the command line, as, I, as you see in the int. In the configuration file, you have a way to organize your, your, your bills. This to, to avoid repeating yourself in the configuration. So you have inheritance, you just have to prefix the section with a base settings, base section name. And as you see, section one and two extend from the configuration set at the base uh, section. You also have append operators, which you can, like this, append files um, from section to section. As you see, at the base, I, I, I'm also I'm only analyzing Python files, and at section one, I want to analyze not only Python files, but also C files. That's an example. I have all, which specify all section, and at the example section, I want to check also if the space are consistent in my code. Okay, let's see how BS works and how to, what are BS really and how to create your own BS. As I said, BS are all, uh, only rules. But BS are the base construct when you need to write a rule. You have to implement the run function. And the run function is the one which is executed to run your algorithm. From the bills, you have two classes, local bills and global bills. Actually, your code should extend from those two ones. And you also can have user inputs at the arcs, which is provided by the framework. Local BIOS runs on every file of your project. And the run function had uh, provide the file name and the, the file content for you to run your algorithm. Also user input and settings. And global bills are, are to run analysis on the whole project. As you see in the run function, you don't have the file, but you can do some internal things to do whatever you want, avec, um, whatever you want with your files. Let's see an example. I have a hello world beer, and now I just print some logging things. 
So I extend from the local B. That means I want to run it on every file and just output a user input, which, will, which is provided by the user. And at the end, the rule is that you have to yield the result. Why? Because when you mix uh, bills, you could get the result from any bills in your bills. If you have dependent bills, you can get the result, provide uh, the result getting from the inner bills you will use, you have used in your, in your bill. I run it. And that's the output. It suggests me to enter my user, user input, and I put line, my, my name. And it suggests me, as you saw before, action to do on this. So, beers. In beers, to write a beers, you have three main categories. You have native beers, linters, to do linting, and you have external beers. What, is, what are native beers? Native beers are the beers that extend for local beers and global beers. Simply like this. If you want an example, that's a native beer. As, I, as you, you saw, the Hello World beers was the native beer. Then, then I just implement the run function and yield some results. And the global bills uh, side aside also do, do the analysis on the work project. Linter bills. Linter bills use your own tools and wrap your tools. Just imagine um, you have a linter like GS Lint and you want to use Koala to wrap it. That's uh, why you use a linter, a linter beer. You specify the executable, and you have to say if this beer is a global or not. If it's global, it means your tools analyze the whole project. And if not, it means just your tools uh, analyze uh, the file, each file of a file. This, the particularity there is that the linter, the linter bill has to implement the create arguments. That's how you pass arguments to your, your executable. We will see an example. And you have uh, uh, also the way to provide a configuration. If you have a tool that a highly configurable a file, you can just do everything in the generate config, produce the JSON you need to, to execute your tools, and it will be injected in the create argument after that. Let's see an example to, 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 to see how it works. I have PyLint that I need to wrap. So, I uh, create the create argument function. That's where I return a list, a, top, a tuple. The tuple contains every options PyLint need to analyze my code. That's simply how it works. And from the output specified there, you specify how how you want, how you want to, to analyze it and interpret the result. External bills is wrapping also your bills, your, your tool, but written in any language. You, it will provide, Koala will provide you uh, some data in JSON and you have, as a rule, you have to produce this result which will be uh, analyzed or used by Koala. As an example, I create a beer 
I wrap my tool which using Node. I create my script in Node.js. And after that, with my add result, I produce the JSON wanted for my tools to be considered as a beer. Like this. I should use console log to show, to, to output it as a JSON. Going further, the, the new thing that will come up is they are creating a, a way to provide to us the AST of any language, a new API using the aspect-oriented programming with aspect and taste, and a new package manager to just um, specify your requirements in your beers, and it will go fetch your NPM uh, package or your pip package in, inside your beers to be sure that when your beers run, you have everything you need to analyze your code. Thank you. Yeah, we, are, we still have time for a few questions. This gentleman here. <laughs> Oh, yes. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, with uh, Koala, are you able uh, to do some kind of uh, uh, semantic static anal analysis to deduce uh, some properties of your program or so on? The question was, can I... Uh... Oh. oh, the question was... Can I do some uh, semantic analysis? I will answer that yes. You have just a run function, so you can do whatever you want. Oh, the 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 intermediate with the representation in that case was just a Python data structure. The Coalap for the local base, Coalap produce gives you the file content and the file name. And you can work with this. And if you have the, the file content, you can do whatever you want with the, your tools that do semantic analysis on this. That's how it works. And the, the, this, they saw that that was a little com, uh, complicated. And you, can, you cannot do much with this uh, simple construct. That's why I said they are working on bringing some real tools to, to give you more abilities. Yes? Um, oh, wait. Any additional question? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You, you mentioned it's a, a language agnostic. Can you can you do can you, can you use it for it? Python 2.7 as well? Uh, can you speak aloud? I don't. Oh, wait. Yes. Can you use it for Python 2.7 as well? Python 2. Uh, I think I I said that it was available for Python 3. I think. Three. Yes. It supports 60 languages. Oh. It supports 60 languages. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's hard. Right. Stop. Oh, man. Yes. It supports 60 languages, so I could uh, analyze a C program in Python 
with the complete a AST from C. Yes. Okay. It depends on the compiler options. How does it work? Yes. Um, the question was, uh, Koala supports 60 languages. And um, you can use Python to analyze C code. And how it works? Yes, that's my question. Because it depends on the compiler options, the flags. Yes, you can use the, um, the linter, the linter beer, and provide your compiler, your um, uh, compiler option via the beers. You have to see it as a, as a wrapper. Okay. That's that's uh, that's um, how I why I, I think is very um, powerful because you can have just one tool and do whatever you want with what exists, what is uh, what is out there to do analysis. Any question? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.